Rock's tough. When you're really PC. Life's rough. When you depend on me. To give you weapons, weapons and armor, information, information for the journey and still you still push in and try to hurt me. Life's tough. When you're really PC. Life's rough. You know, this one hurts. This one really hurts because I review a lot of bad games. I have a counter to prove it, and I'm going to be reviewing a lot more as time goes on. And it really does suck because bad games run the gamut. There's games that are inept. There are games that are just bad. There are games with terrible concepts. There are games with terrible systems. It really, really sucks, though. Whenever you come across a small-time game created by someone who is just so gosh darn happy to get their stuff out there, to actually take that step and, you know, get into the world, like, show what they got, and then it still turns out to be not that good. Role-playing games are creations of passion. That is one of the things that I love about the medium. There isn't a great deal of money in role-playing games, yet people love them. You can ask most creators, unless you are part of the bigger gaming franchises, you're lucky to make a great deal of money off of them whenever you create them, especially if you forego print and just stick to the PDF format and selling them on internet platforms. Creating RPG shows that you have a lot of love for something that goes to the point that you want to share that experience with others, and that is really commendable. So I know, going into any game that I review, that somewhere out there, there is a person who put a lot of thought, who put a lot of effort, who put a lot of work into this thing. And even for, like, the bad ones out there, the ones that actually made me the most <laughs> angry, they at least had the good graces not to make me feel like a dick with each and every page that I read. Sons of Liberty is the game that I'm going to be discussing today. It is a game that was made with a great deal of love and passion behind it. The creator, Josh Roby, puts everything that makes him love this concept onto the page. Even the front page is called the role-playing game of freedom and badassery. Alright, listen, if you put the term badassery on your cover, then you're already putting the bar high on expectations. I am expecting a lot out of this game to get the badassery stamp. So, go ahead, impress me. What is this story really about? It is a game about the American Revolution and the Freemasons. Woo! Color me pumped for this one. Instantly. Instantly you lost me. I don't know how many nerds out there truly are looking to play a game where you get to play the flashback sequence to a National Treasure movie. Okay, I'm going to give this game the benefit of the doubt to, to some extent that, you know what, some games just aren't for me. For instance, I'm not a huge cyberpunk fan, so I'll definitely reach for World of Darkness or D&D before I reach for a cyberpunk game. With that being said, though, I don't know how many nerds out there who are really looking for the American Revolution Freemasonry experience. Okay. I understand that this is a niche market, and a game that caters to that niche market. I praise other games in the past, like Wraith the Oblivion, for catering to a niche market. However, there is a caveat to this game, and that is, if you are actually going to create a game that is too niche, then I'm not entirely sure how many people you're actually selling this game to. There is a huge difference between Wraith the Oblivion selling to a few thousand out of a fan base of hundreds of thousands of people, and then selling to a market that is probably about five people at a convention, three of which are a maybe on whether or not they even want to play the game to begin with. I would like to think that I am in touch with the RPG world to some extent, and understand what people would be interested in. Maybe I'm just lost in some faraway world, holed up in the winter hellscape that is northeastern Ohio. But I have rarely met a person who is clamoring for a game set in the American Revolution. Let's be honest here. When it comes to nerds who are fans of the pre-industrial revolution United States, they typically confine themselves to the American Revolution and Civil War reenactments, as well as museum event days. 
They aren't exactly gathering around the table to roleplay their Benjamin Franklin ready to stick it to the proverbial redcoats. If you are legitimately into RPGs like that, I'm not trying to sit here and judge or condemn you. What I am trying to say is that, at least from my perspective, you are in an extremely small market. But now someone, anyone who has read this game is probably crying foul at me saying, Wait, Tanner, what about the steampunk? And for those of you watching this who have not read the game, you're probably right now sitting there staring at me saying, Tanner, the steampunk? What, what does steampunk have to do with any of this? This game is a steampunk game. It isn't like the game truly sells itself as a steampunk game. Really, if you aren't paying attention to the photographs, you might damn well miss it. But this game is the American Revolution set with a steampunk backdrop. Not much of one, most of the materials still focus on the American Revolution and Freemasonry, and every now and again they remind you that there are steampunk elements, such as George Washington on a mechanical horse, or a crab attacking some random patriot. Strangely enough, steampunk seems like a superfluous and odd addition to this game. Whenever the meat and potatoes of this game is the American Revolution and Freemasonry, you then throw in such a strange ingredient like steampunk. It's like adding Old Bay to a steak. It doesn't make sense, it's really being forced in there, and it kind of doesn't exactly taste good whenever you try it out. The play itself is a bit of a mixed bag as well. I will give kudos to this game for the system. Not only is it rules light, but it is primarily dominated by a card system as opposed to a dice system. It is really well done, and goes along with the gameplay and themes that the creator was going for. I even kind of like the fact that there is a battle mode, story mode, and versus mode. Yeah, it does come across as very video game-like, but it's at least unique and something I haven't seen in other role-playing games. The card system really shows me that the creator of this game still really does know what they're talking about, and really did put some great thought into these mechanics. And then he goes and ruins it by not really having a character creation section. I should have expected this considering the fact that one of the artists credited is potentially Jake Richmond, the man behind Classroom Deathmatch, the other time I had a problem with lack of character creation. The game suggests that you play as one of the founding people in the United States, with the majority of the book detailing the stats and detailing the various figures in U.S. history. While making your own character is relatively simple, it goes back to the whole idea that one of the best parts of an RPG is character creation. To take that away from players it takes away a major reason that a lot of people play RPGs in the first place. This game is getting a miss. It has to get a miss. I mean... All things considered, I applaud this game for its card elements. It's at least unique and it fits the theme. But that's really where my praise ends for this game. The game is boring. It comes across as boring. The subject matter is boring to me. And the book never really sells me on this badassery that it claims. I mean, you can still get people interested in your game if you sell it right, but nothing about this book sold it for me. The steampunk elements feel superfluous and added on. And then you have the whole fact that there is a lack of character creation. One of the biggest sins that an RPG can ever make. I get that you really want us to play as the Founding Fathers, but whenever you take away one of the core aspects of why people love RPGs, then your game is instantly loses just that crucial element to it. As such, tragically, this game is getting the miss. Thank you so much for watching, and please like and subscribe for more. Also, please, please go to patreon.com slash Tanner Bivens, and please subscribe to that as well, just to keep the dream alive for myself, and I can guarantee that you're going to get exclusive content on Patreon as well as early access to these videos. Hope you have a good one.